Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Well, it's come time to give a booster cable jump to a dead battery, either your own vehicle, or someone in the parking lot, or a friend or family member. Well, there's a right way to do it, and there's wrong ways to do it. Let me show you the right way. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. There is a correct way to connect automotive booster cables between a dead vehicle and a live one, or if you want to call it a donor vehicle and a recipient vehicle or the charger and the chargee, whatever you want to call it, you need to get power over to a vehicle that doesn't have enough energy in its battery to turn the starting circuit over in that vehicle. Now, a couple things very quickly, and then I'm going to show you the right sequence. First of all, most batteries aren't totally dead. There is still a charge in them. You're just augmenting that charge with help from a donor battery or a donor vehicle to bring it up to sufficient level to get the vehicle to start and for its own charging circuit to take over. But the battery is not dead and that's important to know because if you think you can mess around with the terminals or put things on them or lay a wrench across them, something conductive, you can get quite a charge out of that literally or big sparking. So even though you think it's a dead battery, no, it's still live. Treat it with respect. Number two, whatever charging uh, jumper cables you use, what's commonly called that, they call it right there automotive booster cables. You can see that right on the instruction label. Get something a sufficient cable gauge. Now remember with electrical wire, the bigger the number, the smaller the wire. So a 10 gauge wire, is smaller than an eight gauge wire. For booster cables, you want either number four or number two cable. And as you can see, that's a sufficient size cable. It's quite a bit bigger than what you're gonna see in household wiring and that sort of thing. It needs to be able to transfer a lot of power with a minimum of resistance. I have seen cheap booster cables where these are real small cables literally melt down. I saw that happen where someone was really drawing power over to a dead battery and they smoked their cables. They literally melted the cables. Make sure you use heavy enough cables. These happen to be number four. Number two is even better. And obviously the larger the gauge, more you're gonna pay for it. Also making sure that the ends of the clips are coated and color coated. So this protects against an accidental discharge, touching against, these are non-conductive. That doesn't mean you sit there and grind them together and all that, but it does give you a modicum of safety uh, by having them this way. All right, let's show you the right sequence. And this is actually what is recommended by manufacturers. This is what's on this label, but we're gonna just give you the shortcut. And what I've looked up on automotive mechanic forums of the correct way to connect them up. And it's a four-step process to connect, a four-step process to unconnect, and it's really intuitive once you understand. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is turn off the vehicle that you're gonna donor, okay, or it's gonna be the donor. Pull up to the dead vehicle, make sure you have enough, just uh, not too much distance, you know where the batteries are in each of the vehicles, so that your cables will reach. This is about a 15 foot cable, works really well for most cases. So make sure you have the right distance, turn off the donor vehicle, don't let it sit there running um, for a couple reasons. One, um, fans and things come on and off, fan belts are running, just make it safer uh, and just turn it off to begin with. Second thing is stretch out your cables Make sure the ends are not touching each other and you're gonna begin with the recipient or the dead vehicle. And here is a memory cue that is really easy to remember. Red to dead. So on these kind of cables, red means hot or positive, black means negative or ground, okay? So this is where power is flowing into the system. This is where it returns home to complete the circuit. So the first clip you're gonna do is red to the positive dead battery or the one that is a recipient. Get that on there very well. As you can see there, it's easy to clip it on. Think you have a good ground or a good attachment. Wiggle it around, it may come loose and reset it until this is really firmly clipped. 
Number two, go to the donor vehicle and attach the red to the positive on the donor vehicle. Again, nothing done with the black. So red to dead, red on the live battery on the donor vehicle. Now on the donor vehicle, you're simply working a loop essentially. You're now gonna attach the black to the negative terminal or the ground terminal on the donor vehicle. Now return to the vehicle that needed the jump start, needs the boost, and attach the ground, but avoid the temptation to just put it onto the ground side of the battery. As you can see in this setup, I couldn't do it if I want to because that terminal is under a ledge and I can't get the clip on it. So you need to find a metal frame chassis component and you need to look around because sometimes you think you've got a main component but it's attached to something plastic on each end, therefore it's not a true ground. Find something that's a component, maybe a shock uh, top or a frame element that's inside of uh, the engine cavity and ground it to that, not to the battery. The reason for this, there might be explosive gases that could discharge if there's a little arc right there. Just keep away from the battery if there is a problem or a short in the battery. You don't want to be around while it starts to ground. So just close the circuit on the, uh, the dead side onto chassis, not to the battery. Now, both of the batteries are paired. They're ready to go. Now return to the donor vehicle, start it, and let it idle. Because what you're trying to do is not just donate power out of the battery, you're also doing it through the charging circuit, the alternator and all the other components to deliver power into that battery. Let it run for a few moments, then try to start the other vehicle. Generally speaking, if it's not a really dead battery or shorted out or extremely cold, it'll only take a few moments and then the other vehicle will start up. Start it and let it run. Now reverse the steps you did. Again, undo that loop circuit. Undo the ground from the, the um, recipient side. Undo the ground from the donor side. Undo the power or the red from the donor side. Undo the red from the recipient side and then put all of your, your pieces back together uh, and coil everything up and get it ready for the next time. Close up your hood on the donor vehicle and let the other one run for a while. Make sure things are okay. You don't have loose battery cables, anything sparking, causing problems. And then let that uh, vehicle that needed the charge run for at least 15 minutes to allow its charging circuit to recharge the battery or get on the road and drive around because uh, at higher speeds, more charging occurs and you're gonna end up with that battery getting topped off sooner. So now you know the safe way to do it. You know what's another thing that drives people crazy? And that's when their tire pressure monitoring system, low tire pressure light comes on on their dashboard. Well, check out this video. We tell you what is happening and what to do to solve it. It's something you can usually take care of yourself. And while you're at it, check out this other video that YouTube thinks is perfect for your interest from our catalog. And we think you'll enjoy it too. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay of Dirt Farmer Jay dot com.